do you think you went too far with your statement about her being pimped? You take it back? I'm not taking it back, my daughter. I have a husband. I have a family. So when you go about saying that I sleep with small boys, do you have a confirmation for that? Ten us, baby daddy. I'm not my son. Then. Did you of taking your Why are you bring? Caroline really came to this reunion with pepper spray in her hands. Like what? <laughs> Oh my goodness oh my goodness like this is so so fun to watch and <laughs> for a second guys can i just ask this very brief question how come toy got triggered by that thing choma said like guys let me just play a little of what choma said like how on earth could toy be triggered by those things and not those things that Caroline said. Guys, make it make sense. <laughs> Please, guys, make it make sense. How come Toy could get triggered by just that thing Choma said? I mean, she said, go creating crayons or whatever. <laughs> Star maker. That was literally what got Toy crazy. And Toy got triggered when, you know, Caroline talked about, you know, had her son and a lot of stuff about her marriage. I mean, those were enough things to trigger Tony. Why did Tony not trigger? Why did Tony not go for Caroline? Why did Tony go for Choma? Guys, please, I need you guys to give us answer because the I mean, it is so hilarious. I mean, watching these women perform <laughs> give us this funny bad pose is really intriguing to the eyes. Like. I don't know, but I really have a lot to say about this reunion. The very episode one, day one of the reunion. Guys, I'm here with the B Intel. You guys know I give undiluted analysis, very factual, very constructive <laughs> analysis of your favorite reality stars as, and reality shows. If you're ready for my big Intel gist, of course, um, stick along with me. Make sure you watch from now to the very end. And guys, at this minute, I would appreciate it if you guys can just turn you know, click on the subscribe button and of course, turn on the post notification bell. Guys, join me in this conversation as we talk about the Real Housewives of Lagos. Every day, the whole drama, <laughs> it was quite epic. I loved every scene that we actually experienced watching it. I mean, guys, um, I'm not going to lie. If I'm going to say anything, before I say anything, I think at this point, we need to understand that the Real Housewives of Lagos team, crew, they understand the assignment. This is how a reunion should be shot. Like, guys, literally... I mean, it was back-to-back -back video clips. This one was no mean saying words. I mean, I literally enjoyed the everything from the onset, from, you know, uh, Uti Wachuku walking into their hotel rooms, saying hi to them, welcoming them. Like, it was fantastic to watch. It was more of an experience. The story was told in this reunion. I really loved every single bit of it. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. So let's get into the gist proper. You guys know I always come with the full story. And I am serving it as hot <laughs> as hell. So guys, um, literally, we saw a lot of things happen. Um, I really need to say, I, I think I really appreciate the fact that Uti Wachuku was picked as the host for the Real Housewives of Lagos reunion. Like, guys, Uti started with serving banging hot humiliation to Choma. Guys, literally, I mean, the show started, you guys already know Choma has been crowned late come of all times. <laughs> and, you know, they talked about a lot of things. They talked about the late coming thing. Um, and Choma actually acknowledged that she wasn't very, very sensitive. She was insensitive, you know, to the other women's reaction on how late she was. And, you know, they talked about the whole... Um, WhatsApp fight, um, the whole message in the group, the whole uh, uh, <laughs> um, Laura issue. And anyways, uh, we found Choma apologizing to the women. And guys, Uti actually had to crown that first scenery with a very beautiful sash. Because of course, Choma said she was willing to wear a sash as late comma. She was going to wear the befitting crown and Uti served it. But I loved that part of it. Um, so, so many other things happened. Um, we literally saw Uti asking um, Laura, the very interesting question of, okay, did Tiana really tell you anything? Did Tony really tell you anything about Caroline? Or did you just make it up as a, as a strategy to get information? And guys, I love Uti Machuku for going, like, hitting it, like Ebuka, 
there was no rigmaroling. <laughs> it was just there. And, you know, at that point when Laura actually exposed that it wasn't a strategy per se to get new information, but it was a strategy to, like, beef, like, tell Caroline that, you know what, I'm not cool with you and I'm going to, I'm going to smear the whole thing thing on your face you know so it was quite interesting to see that Tonya did not actually like bad mouth Caroline to Laura it was just all of Laura's making and you know it was quite interesting so at that point guys it was established that Laura had actually lied using Tony's name so guys there was a little back and forth um but one of the very interesting back and forth was you know after that question was asked um Yabuja of course confirmed that Laura had told her that three times um while they were having that conversation in the salon that, you know, Tony was the person that told her stuff that they said about the beach house and all that and all that. And at the end of the day, Laura was like, she was even surprised because after she watched the whole thing, she found out that Caroline was even the person who said least, was even the nicest of all the women. And that the person who said the most was actually Tony, her friend. And so I was like, no, is he Abojo? I mean, you need to pick on, like, my own was, why was, like, I don't know, but... <laughs> the way I see this show, actually when we look at Laura and Tony, it's just like the team, they just unconsciously just teamed up to say, you know what, we hate this lady and we are going to make her life miserable. <laughs> I don't know, but okay, the show started and we saw the five women seated. They were all gorgeously dressed. Um, um, Laura, of course, came with her attire. There was nothing so crazy about Laura's attire. She came in like an African Ibu woman, I liked her attire. It was just clean and cool. Um, Iyabojo was looking spectacular, like a do queen. I loved how she looked, and she was looking very, very girl. I mean, I loved Mariam's outfit the most. I mean, she was looking like, I mean, Kalaba, right? Um, yeah, she was looking like this, you know, <laughs> Amarina bomb. She was looking pretty. I really loved her attire. Of course, Choma was totally, I didn't know what ethnic group Choma was representing, but she looked more like the Fulani people or something with the turban she had on her hair but she they all looked gorgeously dressed um of course um yeah um tony actually dressed like you know a jagaband wearing her agbadan you know she was really looking savvy um so guys the five women were seated talking and then <laughs> there was a grand entrance i mean guys when uh, caroline Whoa. actually entered there was this feeling of yes i have come to shine and i have come to bring the pepper spray and spray it on your eyes like literally when i looked at um chama's face it was more like oh my gosh caroline just stole the show from me like this is the kind of grand entrance that we all know that chama loves to have but hey we saw caroline enjoying that stage and presence it was quite very interesting so guys literally caroline settled down and the conversation continued and guys I'm not going to lie. It, looking at the six women, if the show was not Real Housewives of Lagos, if the show was Big Brother, <laughs> hey, the truth is, you know, when most of the housemates, most of the housewives pounce on a particular participant in any reality show, it kind of makes people like that person more. It kind of makes people see the other side of this person. It kind of makes that person even more popular. And I'm not going to lie. If Caroline was in a show like the real, uh, like Big Brother Africa or Big Brother Nigeria or Big Brother Zanzi or Big Brother whatever, she would definitely be the one to go home with the star prize because all eyes were on her. It was like she was the single lady out of the whole crew. And I'm like, okay. So, I mean, back to me asking the question. So, there were a lot of questions and answers. I mean, the trashing, Caroline and Toyin literally trashed that their Twitter war. They came for themselves back to back. Everybody was maintaining their stand. I mean, but before even that episode, we actually saw Utimachuku asking Caroline specifically if she was ready to redraw what she said about Laura being pimped and not being pimped. And she was like, you know what? I probably said that too much on camera, but I'm still going to own it to my chest. I said what I said. I'm not taking it back. And I'm like, hey, this babe came with drama. <laughs> so, I mean, looking at how both Laura and Tony could not even bring their craze to match Caroline's craze, many start suspecting this to women. Like, maybe, just maybe, Caroline probably has a lot of information about this women that she feel like I think the, this women feel threatened by Caroline. They probably feel like um, Caroline might do something or might blackmail them or might sell more of their like secrets or might say something that might, might just you know 
throw them out of whatever. So I just feel like they felt threatened by Caroline. I mean, I don't know, but that was just the vibe I got. I don't know what you got. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I mean, who do you think is serving it hot in this reunion? I personally, for this day one, I'm giving it 100% to Caroline. Caroline came for everybody's head that was ready to come at her. Like, she gave it to everybody. And if I'm going to crown it, I'm going to say, guys, I'm not going to lie. I love the, the role that Yabujo is playing. She is playing that person, that confrontational person, who is going to say the things that she said in front of you for you to talk and defend yourself. You know, literally seeing how Yabujo was telling, you know, Laura back to back, like saying it the way it was. I mean, Laura could not even defend herself in that moment. And I was like, yes, we need all those aspects in those women. So it was quite an interesting episode, you know, literally watching how those women were reacting to themselves. It was very clear. I mean, Caroline is on her lane and all the other women are on their own lane. And, but guys, I'm not going to lie. I still find it very amusing. I still find it very hilarious that Toy could get triggered by that thing Choma said. And could go to fight Choma and not fight Caroline. Like, I don't know if anybody finds that very hilarious and hypocritical. I personally found it. And if I were to say the truth, I would say categorically that Choma lost his soldier in Caroline. I mean, how I wish these two people were standing together. I mean, guys, literally, you guys already know um, Caroline and Choma are the same, have the same zodiac sign. You guys know about the zodiac sign because literally we had Tony talking about it. Tony and Laura are both Pisces. Um, so they like kind of act similar. They have the same similar, like it is literally like when we watch the reunion, we're trying to see Laura keep the cool part. Like Laura started the drama she could not finish. So she, Laura started the drama. Tony is helping her finish the drama that she could not act. <laughs> now when we look at um, Caroline and Choma, I mean, these guys, I mean, you, if you know, I mean, they celebrated their birthdays, um, the late last days of June and anybody who is born in June, I think they are cancer and you guys know cancer. Their symbol is the crab. They can sting you where it hurts. <laughs> so if you look at Choma, and Caroline, she definitely have those things around them. So, but I felt like Caroline's thing was, was more nastier than Choma's thing. So I'm still finding it very hilarious that Tony could react to Choma and not react to Caroline. So for me, I feel like Choma literally lost a soldier in Caroline because imagine these two people still standing firmly. Because the truth is, you need an alliance in a show like The Real Housewives of Lagos. But I mean, looking at how Caroline is the one man soldier, really like maintaining her queenly status and coming at everybody <laughs> whether we all agree to this or not caroline is a sophisticated agbe that is ready to pounce on anybody she is the pepper dam of this um real housewives of lagos i'm not gonna lie so it's just been back and forth and at the end of the day we literally saw mariam you know talk about something about having a present for caroline I can't wait for that episode, man. I can't wait to see because I know that presence is going to bring in more. It's going to bring in more dust into the show. <laughs> and we can't even hear. I can't wait to hear that fetish part. I mean, we literally heard Car um, Mariam saying that maybe it was Caroline who told her that, you know, somebody was using somebody's whatever to shine destiny, whatever. I don't know. That sounded really fetish. But you guys, all those dirty secrets this women have been keeping, we are going to get to the bottom of it eventually. And we're all here to give you the full intel. Guys, let me know your thoughts on what you think about this women. I would say it. I mean, I just feel like I really like the fact that Tony was really confronting, like, like Laura and from the look of things, it looks like they're no more friends. So it just looks like the people who started this, um, this whole <laughs> reality show the real housewives of lagos being friends ended up not being friends i mean looking at chema and caroline they're no more friends looking at tony and um and um laura they're no more friends and i'm like okay so is that gonna be a new alliance and guys if i were to look at a new alliance i'm just here imagining say i don't think laura and caroline are ever going to be friends well i'm just here imagine what if these two guys <laughs> end up being friends the story is really going to be very savage, but I don't know. I still wish that um we'll get to see more. I mean, we'll definitely get to see more. And I'll definitely be here to share more of what's up um, with the women, um, the Real Housewives of Lagos. Guys, literally, that was literally everything that happened. All the beefs, the real major beefs that we actually saw, you know, in the first stage, 
in the show was actually taken step by step and i love the fact that it was broken down in details i mean i literally feel like the big brother ninjatsi needs to learn how reunions need to be shot like i'm giving them 100 percent at making sure they did not leave any stone unturned um like guys let me know your thoughts really in the comment section what do you guys really think um are you feeling it like i'm feeling it um and i mean for now we're enjoying the Basco's and i can't wait to see the next level of savagery that these women are going to be unleashing all right guys i think at this point i'm going to be seeing you guys in another one and i'll thank you so much for your watch time see you next time it's still julie keeping it real as usual ciao ciao guys